this is e2070 week four lecture one you can see i did a horrible copy and paste job anyway we're going to wrap up rc and oral first order circuits the concepts so recall from last time where we left off that is we set up this first order differential equation okay and we get a first order differential equation because of the fact the iv relationship of the capacitor involves a derivative so here it is and we talked about unit step functions is the unit step at t equals zero we assume that there's no leakage across the uh, capacitor so this magically is held uh, the initial voltage across the capacitor is held to be initial uh, so let's start uh, solving this there is uh, recall also that this unit step function can be modeled as a switch that closes at the step time in this case it's t equals zero but note that from the previous lecture voltage across a capacitor cannot change instantaneously this implies vc so of zero minus is vc of zero plus is v initial and the important idea is in general vc of t equals zero minus so t equals zero minus means it's right before the discontinuity in the circuit happens and this is right after but the voltage cannot change okay this is an infinitesimal time interval before and after the discontinuity that's what the minus and the plus mean so here is our initial condition okay now the way you solve this differential equation is it's a linear first order uh, ordinary no partial derivatives constant coefficient differential equation okay you can solve this using the variable separable method but let's just intuitively solve uh, let us intuitively solve the differential equation because I want to be able for you to interpret the results okay the differential equation so consider now so basically you have a differential equation whose derivative well, it's almost as if it's uh, so let's do this Okay, so it's almost as if the derivative of the function is equal to itself. If Vth was zero, we only had initial conditions. So consider, aha, so let's do this. So there's no Thevenin voltage, okay? And then let's just leave it at that, right? So this is called as, in other words, We are evaluating or determining, not evaluating, determining is a better word. We are determining the natural response of our circuit, uh, the natural response. Is also called as the zero input response given okay, the input is zero or homo you might have heard of these terms in your differential equation classes homogeneous response okay so but this is pretty simple in the sense If we call this equation one, therefore one becomes dvc dt. If you rewrite this, is going to be minus vc over rth times c. But this is with, of course, non-zero initial conditions, right? So v inish v of vc of zero plus. V initial okay 
So, well, this basically it's telling you that the derivative of the function is the negative of the function itself. Of course, there is a non-unity constant, but we know, but based on the properties of the exponential function, we can easily say Vc of t is going to be V initial Okay, so let's do this. Let's call this uh, VC. Well, let's just leave it as VC of T because I want to call this VC N of T, but we'll leave it as VC of T. V initial because the natural response, but whatever, just for simplicity, e to the minus T. Now, this is how you take care of the constant, RTH times C. Uh, let's check our solution. Let's check if the initial conditions are satisfied. Vc of zero, okay. So initially is v initial, which is basically Vc of zero plus. So that's good. Okay. Second, the derivative is what? It's v initial times e to the minus t over r t h times c times the derivative of the numerator. Okay, by the chain rule, this implies. And by the way, you gotta get used to this notation. It's called Vc dot, okay, the dot means derivative with respect to time, because time as the independent variable is very special, is, so you can see, here is our Vc repeated, so it's basically minus 1 over Rth to C times Vc, so it's good, okay, so the homogeneous response is done, mm. whoops, I didn't delete this, so you can see that I copied and pasted stuff from the last lecture and I forgot to delete this so let me cut that out over there okay analogously analogously let us consider the forced response or zero state. So state is another term for initial condition or memory, right? In other words, the voltage across the capacitor is like memory, right? So you remember some initial value and then you act based on that value. Well, There's the circuit response, but in this case, the initial voltage is zero. So it's called zero state response, okay? Or the non-homogeneous response. We'll use the force response or zero state response, okay, fine or the non-homogeneous response. But I don't think anybody uses the word non-homogeneous. It's a forced or zero state response. Therefore, what we get is we have some VTH, but something important is V final U of T, okay? The U of T is gone because that's when, in the sense, after T equals zero is when our differential equation, quote unquote, acts. This here is dvc of d plus vc, but then here uh, vc of zero plus is zero volts, okay? Zero initial conditions, but you can easily see that this response. And by the way, going back up here, number three is if you plot this guy, so let's just plot, I mean, going all the way back to the homogeneous response, sorry about this, I should have done this, I knew I was missing something. So Vc of t, initially you were at some, or we were at some V initial, again, we are assuming that uh, V final is real number, so these are real numbers. we assumed that in this case, when we plot the picture, V initial is positive. Okay, so initially we had that, then so we decay down to zero, all right? So there's that picture. Now this fellow, going back to the 
force response, we can see that Vc of t, we can guess the solution to be V final okay, times 1 minus E to the minus T over RTH times C. Again, you can solve this by variable separable method. And if you want to review our differential equations, I highly recommend that you do so. Okay. But anyway, let's do a check. Okay, number one, so it's not really a check. Uh, going back here, so the plot of Vc of t looks like that. Number one, Vc at t equals zero. Oh God, I crashed. T equals zero is obviously zero volts. Okay, so that's good. Second, okay. Let's see if we satisfy the differential equation. RTH C times dVc dt plus Vc equals RTH C times the derivative of this guy is simply V final times e to the minus t over RTH times C divided by RTH times C plus you get V final times 1 minus e to the minus T over RTH times C, okay? Which is, so this cancels, so we basically get V final, which is the left-hand side, so this is also good, okay? But there's another actually third check you can do here. Notice that VC, so let's call this 2, I think. Yep. So notice that VC as T goes to infinity from is V final, okay? And this makes sense because uh, recall that at steady state, this is from last lecture, capacitor acts as an open circuit. So in other words, when it's fully charged with the V final voltage with energy one half C V final squared, capacitor acts like an open circuit. So basically what we get is eventually there's RTH. So as T goes to infinity, you basically get this as the final voltage, okay? So as a capacitor, and then the plot of Vc of T looks something like this. Again, we're going to assume that the final voltage is positive. So we have what is called as a rising exponential. So initially, we were at zero volts. Okay, and then we go like that. So it'll do be final, OK? So the bottom line is, bottom line, since we have a linear differential equation, okay, the total response Vc of t is basically the sum of the two responses, so which is V initial e to the minus t over RTH times c plus V final times 1 minus e to the minus t over RTH times c, okay? So here it is. Voila. Or, so it's called this 3, 
note that 3 implies that is VC of T is V homo V natural plus V forced also what we can do is we can write VC of T so 3 implies that VC of T can be written like this V final plus V initial minus V final e to the minus T over RTH times C okay and 4 implies VC of T is equal to the what is called the steady state response plus transient response so these the origin of these terms steady state and transient should be obvious in the sense this is called transient this part because as t goes to infinity again we're assuming that r and c are positive okay we're not going to cover negative resistors and leader capacitors in this course so anyway as t goes to infinity this part dies out so it's called the transient so at steady state we have basically the whatever input constant voltage that we put in and that obviously agrees with the capacitor acting like an open circuit etc it's like beautiful how all of these agree with each other and they should right so some comments are in order okay some comments and this will wrap up the lecture like this uh, in the sense i mean after these comments okay so in class we will do a lot of examples Right, so you should also work on as many problems as you can. I recommend you try to do each and every problem in chapter 7 till you understand all this down cold. Okay, It's not that difficult. You just have to understand it. So some comments. Number one, uh, in general, for a first order differential equation, first order linear differential equation with constant coefficients the important thing is and x of t being some x final u of t so basically what i'm looking at is x of t equals some constant alpha okay dx dot plus x okay x of zero plus is x initial we have uh, let's see I uh, know uh, it's not x so that's what I was like confused so let's call this x in x in okay so x of t is you can write it as x final plus x initial minus x final e to the minus t over alpha okay so in other words x final is x as t goes to infinity plus x at zero plus minus x at t as t goes to infinity not exact t goes to infinity e to the minus t over alpha so it's common number one common number two alpha is called the time constant okay okay so what we'll get so in other words time constant or tau right so time constant abbreviated by tau right okay 
So going back to let's call this considering. Well, let's not call it anything in the sense I'm going to con just consider the zero input response tau is the time taken for the initial condition to decay. This is why it's so special. To for the not the initial condition for the for x of t here this is what I was looking for for x of t to decay to one over e of its initial value okay now this is point number three and I'm out of time right so give me uh, like a minute in the sense I'm over my 20 minute mark but number three is tau for an RC circuit is obviously RTH times C the RL circuit is the dual of the RC circuit in the sense so this is all I'm going to write and I want you to derive this so that is I V L if you know that V is L D I D T in other words we had I is C D V D T so now we have V is L D I D T this implies that when you have an this is what I'm talking about so V T H R T H when you have something like this inductance L what we look at is the current in this loop okay so we say i of 0 minus is some i initial and you can see the current has to remain constant across discontinuities if you want you can do a source transform on it in other words find the Norton equivalent of this so basically what we'll get is very similar to the capacitor this is the dual right it's very simple that is i of t is I final plus I initial minus I final, okay, e to the minus t over tau is L over R, okay, so I'm just going to write it as L over RTH, okay, so the time constant. the lower RTH and again you should derive this okay so that's about it for chapter 7 uh, let's start working on problems okay so, see you next lecture